Okay. X Defiant is finally here, and oh, you yeah, must definitely. change these settings for the best performance. I'm talking about better FPS, aim, movement, audio, you name it. For gameplay input, we're going to be rocking controller, field of view 110. In this game, the higher FOV just feels better. It feels like my aim is better, so I play on 110. The lowest I'd recommend is 100. Now, I wouldn't go to 120. I think 120 is a little bit too much, so maybe like 115, 114 but I currently have mine on 110. ADS field of view, consistent. This is gonna go matching your FOV. It's gonna make your aim have one, less visual recoil, and two, it'll just feel natural. Independent is recommended like if you're using 95 FOV or lower, but then again, I don't recommend that FOV. ADS hold, ADS sensitivity transition, make sure this is on instant, this is huge. Off, on, make sure your crotch behavior is toggle, tap, this is gonna help with movement, auto sprint off. And if you go down here, slide behavior on tap, this is going to help with your movement as well. Sprint, interrupt, reload. Please keep this off. You don't want your reload to be interrupted when you sprint in this game because you can reload while sprinting and it's going to feel a lot better with your movement. Auto reload weapon on and auto switch weapon on. This is going to help you in those crazy situations where you need to reload or you need to switch. It will switch you automatically to your pistol. So that way you don't have to reload and you can shoot your gun. Auto grab ledge off, walk behavior hold, and scoreboard behavior hold. Next, this is going to be huge. User interface settings. I have this on 0 and 40 for my HUD limits. Now you're asking me why is horizontal on 0 and why is vertical on 40? So I put my... HUD closer to my screen because one, the most important thing on this is my mini map and it gives you so much information and you want to be able to see it a lot easier than it being all the way in the opposite, you know, in the corner of the screen. So when I put this closer, I can look at my mini map and get so much information from it. You can see your uh, ammo, you can see your gun, you can see like other little things in your HUD that it does help. But the biggest reason is because of the mini map. And then a cool little thing you have is damage numbers on when you're shooting people across the map or like, you know, just you're putting bullets into people. It shows how much damage you're dealing. It's kind of helpful information to know, like you're getting a headshot, like what's the damage output looking like, especially if you want to try different attachments. And then enemy health bars, make sure to have this on. You can kind of gauge where your health, the enemy health is, and you can, you know, fight based off that. It definitely is helpful. You definitely want to make sure to have this on. I have this on off, meters. Uh, this is another cool thing. My FPS display and ping display in the top left corner, you can see I have my, you know, basically showing me this information, which can be helpful at times, knowing what's my ping like. Am I getting joked online? You know, am I getting BS'd? Also the FPS, you know, if I need to make some changes on my settings or anything like that. And next we got controller settings. So for button layout, I do use Brawler Flip. This is kind of the same as Call of Duty's Tactical Flip, if you ever played Call of Duty. And this is what I've been using for a very long time. So this is what I'm just used to. It feels really good and it's basically changing the settings and obviously flip. And next for aim assist, I do run standard. Please do not disable aim assist if you're on controller. Don't do it. Then for aim assist strength and aim assist follow, I have this on zero, which is the default. Some people have messed around putting it, you know, in the negatives to like kind of help. I've tried it. Sometimes it feels like I, it does help. Sometimes I feel like it doesn't. I recommend just keep it on zero. You want the most aim assist possible. Aim response curve type, reverse S curve. This just feels the best overall. This is kind of, again, like dynamic in Call of Duty. It gives you that like aim acceleration speed as you go. It slows down, speeds up, then slows down at the end is the best way to explain it in simple terms uh, whenever you're moving your stick around. Uh, so this is the one I like the most. This is what like pro players were using back in the day and it was still do. And this is what I've used for a long time. So refers S curve just gives you that snap ability and you're going to notice it when you switch to it. I play on 45, 45 sensitivity. Uh, I would recommend between something between 35 to 45. If you feel like you need to go down a little bit, go down to 35. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like you can handle a little bit quicker sense or if you feel like you need a middle ground, go to 40 or go to 45. I think that's a good balance. Uh, I have this on one because since I'm playing on a lower sense, I don't really need to lower this uh, one, one. For my dead zones, dead zones are important, especially in this game. You want quicker response time. You want your aim and movement to feel a little bit fluid, a little bit better. So for my left stick, I have this all the way down to one. It's going to allow your movement just to be a little bit easier and like quicker. And then for my right stick, I have this on three. Again, this is going to help you like basically get a slightly more control of your stick and your aim. So when you're aiming at people, you're going to shots going to be a little bit better. So have this on one and three. If for some reason you're feeling like you're getting a little bit too much stick drift or up this to five, um, but I would recommend like a lower like three or four on the right stick. Acceleration speed multiplier. I have this on 1.5. Now, this is something really important to know. It's not applied while aiming down sight. So when you're ADS, it's not going to mess up your aiming. You know, you're going to start missing. This is good, however, for, you know, when you're moving your stick around and trying to, you know, get ready to aim at your targets and center on your targets. 
and you know it's kind of move your stick around on the map you're going to be cool you can play on a lower sense while still getting that ex uh, acceleration speed and like you know kind of move your stick around quicker when needed because you are going to have people flying at you you're going to have to make those quick adjustments so this is a cool little setting i have it on 1.5 this was a huge tip given given to me to one of from one of the creators um i definitely like these aim settings right now i've been doing insane stuff and then it's off, off, and of course, off. Now, in X Define, audio settings are nothing crazy. So this is going to be fairly simple, but I'm going to break it down for you guys really quick. Uh, this should both should be at 69. So my main volume, 100, obviously the most important thing. Might as well have this 100. It doesn't really matter. You can adjust it with your, if you use a mix sample or anything, you can lower it or increase it. Uh, for dialogue volume, I had this on 69 because you don't really, your character is going to talk in game and give that like, Maybe some good call outs and stuff, but realistically, it shouldn't be too loud. And, you know, if they once in a blue moon to give something important, you should be able to hear it. So we're going to have that on 69 SFX volume at 100 sound effects is important, especially footsteps. Footsteps is the most important sound you're really looking for. Obviously, you can hear other stuff that might help you. So you definitely want your main volume and SFX volume at 100 UI volume at 69. Again, this doesn't really help that much, but it is good to have and just have it a little bit high in case you gives you some important information and music volume at zero because music does nothing for you. It's no, there's no advantage at all. So you might as well put it down to zero. Next, let's go to the big important thing of videos and graphics. This play mode, I have it on full screen, which is usually ideally where you want to be. Make sure your resolution and refresh rate are on point. Of course, if you go down, I have reduced latency on, reduces input latency, but may cause lower frame rate. I have a really good PC, so even if it lowers my frame rate a little bit, I would love to have less latency, you know, less lag. Um, I want that fluid, good gameplay. And then tr uh, triple buffering, again, this is supposed to help your frames, but also hurts your latency. And I think, again, if you can, if you can, you know, frames for me is not number one. If you can have this at off and on, I think it's an advantage for you. And then of course you want to have this on on plus boost for you know the most uh latency optimization uh then my brightness is on 10 contrast is on 15. if you go down here i have this dx12 on off i have my graphics quality on custom v-sync mode off frame rate limit off i right here you know we're trying to get the most performance in fps so a lot of these settings are going to be low or off uh shadow quality low spot shadows low spot shadow resolution low contact shadows off resolution scale at 100 sharpening 10. I like to have my sharpening higher than normal. I would say between eight to 10 is good because it just makes the game look, you know, cleaner, crispier, and it's just going to up the quality. Obviously, you put it too high. Sometimes it might look a little weird, but, you know, it's been looking good for me so far. Uh, low, 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 off, low. You see what I'm saying here? Uh, off, low, zero, zero, off, and water quality off. And this as well on... Uh, this is on and this is on a medium, you know, just a healthy balance, you know, just a little bit better quality. If you could put it on high, you want better quality, sure. If you feel like you're still going to hit an FPS, put it on low. And then for a little secret setting that not many people talk about is there's a flashbang effect in the language and accessibility tab. And this basically changes your flash. If you get flash from bright to dark. So, you know, you get flashbang is like super bright. Um, this, this is a cool setting. You can change the dark so it doesn't blind you in real life. And you, once you're unflashed, you can go back to normal. That is the secret sauce. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe for more tips and videos that we will be doing on X Defiant.